What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now if you want to play a deck that embodies elements of aggression, disruption, and a little bit of burn, well do I have the deck for you. Let me introduce you to Trickstar. Trickstar is an archetype comprised primarily of light fairy type monsters. The strength of this deck lies in its ability to disrupt your opponent's plays while simultaneously burning away at their life points. The central strategy for Trickstar is to deal small amounts of continuous effect damage through a wide array of different effects. But since its core engine is rather small, the deck is also quite flexible and can easily adapt to the meta, allowing for a lot of experimentation. Another advantage of Trickstars is that the archetype will be getting tons of support from future sets, especially considering it's an archetype of one of the Vrain's main protagonists. Let's begin with the main monster lineup, starting with Trickstar Candina. A themed Stratos for the deck, on normal summon, Candina allows us to add any Trickstar card from deck to hand. This tutoring ability is incredibly powerful because it allows us to access whatever combo piece we may be missing from our hand. Additionally, Candina inflicts 200 damage to our opponent immediately after they resolve a spell or trap card. Keep in mind that all of the Trickstar burn effects are continuous, meaning that they don't activate, so your opponent is unable to respond with a card like Solemn Strike. All of this combined with an 1800 attack body, and Candina is definitely the heart and soul of the deck. Next up is Trickstar Licorice. As a quick effect, we can reveal Licorice from our hand and target one Trickstar monster we control, except another copy of Licorice. Licorice gets special summoned to the field, and if that goes through, we return the targeted Trickstar monster to our hand. This effect is important for two reasons. First, the bounce effect gets Candina back to our hand for next turn, keeping our engine going and giving us a good follow-up play. And second, Licorice allows us to get in for massive damage by using her effect in the battle phase. Licorice also inflicts 200 damage to our opponent each time they add a card or cards from deck to hand, and that includes drawing. Licorice will typically be our ending play so that we can preserve Candina for next turn and also burn our opponent for an incredible amount of damage since adding cards from deck to hand is so prevalent. One trick with Licorice is that if we have multiple copies in hand, we can target the same monster with all copies of Licorice and special summon them all out onto the field. Trickstar Lilybell is a monster that's typically only played at one copy, but it varies from player to player. Once per turn, if Lilybell is added to hand except by drawing it, we can special summon Lilybell to the field. Lilybell can also attack our opponent directly, and even though Lilybell only has 800 attack, when she inflicts battle damage to our opponent, we can target a Trickstar monster in our graveyard and add it to hand. Keep in mind that Lilybell's graveyard recursion ability is not once per turn, which enables some nasty OTKs under the right circumstances. The final Trickstar monster is Trickstar Narcissus. While seldom played, once per turn, Narcissus can be special summoned to the field anytime our opponent takes effect damage outside of the damage step. Since Narcissus is a level 4, there's a potential here for rank 4 plays with Candina or an extra monster to be used as link material for a link summon. Also, Narcissus inflicts 200 damage to our opponent each time they resolve a monster effect from either their hand or graveyard. Some players like playing a lone copy of Narcissus, but it doesn't really generate any additional advantage, nor does it inflict enough damage since it doesn't include monster effects that activate on field. As for the remaining monsters, there's a lot you can do with this archetype, since the monster lineup is so small. Some good generic options include cards like Blackwing, Gofu the Vague Shadow, or Grinder Golem. Both of these cards give the deck a much needed push, utilizing monsters in the extra deck. Gofu is essentially a free Link 3 monster, but also being a tuner allows for synchro plays as well, such as Cyframe Lord Omega in tandem with Licorice, or Black Rose Dragon or Ancient Fairy Dragon in tandem with Lilybell. Grinder Golem also enables Link summons with ease, but the issue is that it locks us out of our normal summon for the turn, so do keep that in mind. Another good generic option is Eater of Millions. Not only does Eater of Millions give us another threat on the board, but it's able to out a myriad of different options that would be difficult for the deck to handle otherwise. Hand traps are also an easy inclusion in this deck. 
Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, Max C, Cyframe Gear Gamma, and most notably, Droll and Lockbird. All of these cards allow us to keep our opponents at bay while we establish our own board and get our engine going. Droll and Lockbird is also valuable for another reason that we'll discuss a little later on. Aside from generic options, Trickstar can also meld well with a variety of other archetypes. The Wind Witch engine, for instance, gives the deck another line of play, since Ice Spell is essentially a free copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon if it goes all the way through. And the Invoked engine supports the deck nicely since it's comprised primarily of light monsters, giving us excellent fodder for Invoked Macaba. When it comes to the extra deck, Trickstar doesn't necessarily rely on extra deck monsters, but more so uses the extra deck as a toolbox for a plethora of different scenarios. Trickstar Holly Angel is a Link 2 that requires two Trickstar monsters. Holly Angel inflicts 200 damage to our opponent each time we normal or special summon a Trickstar monster to a zone Holly Angel points to. In addition to that, those Trickstar monsters cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Finally, if our opponent takes damage by a Trickstar's monster effect, Holly Angel gains attack equal to the damage they took until the end of the turn. Holly Angel is rarely summoned as our core of Trickstar monsters are already incredibly strong, but there are some instances where Holly Angel can be relevant that makes it worth running and can sometimes be very valuable in time. The other Trickstar Link monster is Trickstar Black Cat Bat, but it's really not worth running because it doesn't really benefit the strategy as a whole. Firewall Dragon is also an auto-include because it enables an OTK combo with Trickstar Licorice and Lilybell. But beyond that, we'll want to include a variety of other Link monsters such as Link Spider, Proxy Dragon, and Borolo Dragon. The Phantom Knights of Breaksword is a nice one of since it's easily made with two copies of Licorice and can out lots of problematic cards. And since there's so much room in the extra deck, if we're opting to play Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, we can play plenty of powerful and problematic targets. Moving on to the spell lineup, Trickstar Light Stage is the deck's field spell, and upon activation, allows us to add a Trickstar monster from deck to hand. Light Stage allows us to access Candina, which in turn allows us to tutor for any Trickstar card in our deck. And with 3 Candina, 3 Light Stage, and 3 Terraforming, the deck has a lot of consistency. Additionally, Light Stage has a once per turn effect where we can target a spell or trap card our opponent controls and prevent it from being activated until the end phase. Then, on the end phase, they must either activate the set card or send it to the graveyard. If that weren't enough, the best part about Trickstar Light Stage is that each time a Trickstar monster inflicts battle or effect damage to our opponent, Light Stage inflicts an additional 200 damage on top of that. So let's take Licorice for instance. Normally, Licorice would inflict 200 damage per card added from deck to hand. Now with Light Stage active, our opponent will take an additional 200 damage in addition to the damage they already took from Licorice, totaling 400. Now if we control two copies of Licorice, this means our opponent will take 800 damage for every card added from deck to hand, and putting us that much closer to winning that game. The deck also runs Pot of Desires to not only boost consistency, but also since there isn't really any necessary combo pieces that we're worried about banishing. This also combos very well with Eater of Millions if we're opting to go that route. Additionally, board wipes like Dark Hole and Regeki are encouraged, and back row removal such as Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters is also commonly played to deal with annoying threats. The last popular spell to run in Trickstar is Scapegoat. Scapegoat is what allows us to more easily access our extra deck and put more threats on the board. During the end phase of our opponent's turn, by activating Scapegoat, we now essentially have four Link materials to work with at our disposal to not only handle our opponent's board, but to help build one of our own. Rounding off this video with the traps, the reason why everyone wants to play Trickstar is Trickstar Reincarnation. One of the most powerful disruptive traps ever created, Trickstar Reincarnation banishes our opponent's entire hand, and if it does, they draw the same number of cards. This is incredible because if we know they've searched a key one of or a combo piece that we really don't want them to have, we can use Reincarnation to disrupt their strategy entirely. Combo this with Trickstar Licorice and you're going to be burning your opponent to death in no time. There's also a combo with Droll and Lockbird, which will banish our opponent's entire hand and prevent them from drawing any cards, essentially acting as a win condition in itself. 
In addition to that, we can banish Trickstar Reincarnation from the graveyard to target and special summon a Trickstar monster from our graveyard. This card can be used both offensively to get in additional damage or defensively to protect ourselves from getting OTK'd. Some other popular trap options are Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning, or even Heavy Storm Duster. With the lingering threat of Trickstar Reincarnation, a lot of opposing players will set their strongest cards face down on the field in an attempt to avoid getting disrupted and give them some sort of follow-up play. That's when we have the opportunity to punish them with Heavy Storm Duster and blow away all of their face down cards. I really hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to Trickstar. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you found this really helpful, consider backing me on Patreon. Because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time!